All right, so still on the first homework for Thermo. Oops, sorry. Didn't bump the camera. Okay. This one states from the total differential of S as a function of T and D, that guy, um, use the WWW method to relate how heat capacity changes with volume for the Van Wall's equation state. What's the WW method for those folks at home who aren't from South Dakota? That is the whoop, whoop, whoop method. Okay. Um, it's my own little thing. It's actually the, you know, double derivative equivalents. Um, you know, like df squared dx dy. Um, you know, that, it doesn't matter what order you take them in. And so on and so forth. Okay. So, but we call it whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah. But let's read the problem. It says, use the whoop, whoop, whoop method. And before we do that, it says to relate how heat capacity changes with volume the van der Waals equation of state. Now, one thing that's missing, though, is um, it, this is supposed to say under isothermal conditions. So, add that in. Under isothermal conditions. Okay, now, <laughs> relate. What does that word invoke for you? When you think of the word relate, what do you see in your head? You see a relationship. And when you see a relationship, you see a derivative. You know, when I look at it, you know, when I look at derivative, I no longer see derivatives. I see relationships. Okay. And you should too. Okay. So I see a relationship. Okay. Well, what's being related to what? It says relate how heat capacity changes. So changes, that word. What symbol do we see when we think of a change? We think of a delta or a D. So how does heat capacity change with changes in volume under ice and thermal conditions? So that's what I'm trying to find. So that's what I want to find. You know, so there's, there's your numeracy. Okay. I want to find that, but I need to use the whoop whoop method. So, like in a graduate level class, I probably just say, "Oh, well, tell me how heat capacity changes with volume for uh, under isothermal conditions." Well, you're not a graduate student, so we'll do this easier. Okay. So we're going to use the whoop 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 method. For those at home, for those of my students, I refresh on whoop 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 method. Okay. Whoop whoop whoop. The first one that doesn't have a D. Whoop! You know, there's two pairs. So go to the first, you know, so I start with the first non D. And then I go to the D of the other pair. And then I go back. Whoop! to the first D of the pair. And that's my constant. Whoop, whoop, whoop. D, dp, dt at constant B, dt. I got divides by t's, I'm doing derivatives of derivatives, and where do I even start? All right, well, let's, let's look at the le left first, okay? Now, we talked about this. When we see that, what do we see? You know, I mean, A, we see relationships. B, we see some algebra. Okay. Well, why is CCV over T? That's not some goofy thing. That's just CV multiplied by 1 over T. Now, why isn't it CV divided by T? Because we don't use the quotient rule ever. So it's really CV times T, uh, times 1 over T. And when I take the derivative of a product, I use the product rule. Aha! 
So I've got 1 over t times dCv dV, a constant t, plus Cv d1 over t dV, a constant t. Oh, well, there's that guy. Okay. Well, there's a 1 over t attached to him, but I can always use algebra to get rid of that t. But that's Cv times d1 over t over dV, you know, okay. So, you know, so I ask myself all the funky function questions. You know, all, all my maximum relationship questions. And step zero, is there a function, funky function? In this case, is there a funky function? Yes, there is. There's one over t. But I don't need to do the steps associated with funky functions because of this guy. If temperature is constant, what can you say about the inverse temperature? It's also constant. And what do you say about constant things that are trying to change? They don't change, meaning that it is equal to zero. Okay. <clears throat> so that's goofy thing number one. Goofy thing number two. Oh, I got this thing over here. Well, um, oh, dp dt over v. I, I, I've seen that somewhere. Yes, that's beta over kappa, right? That's true, right? It is true. Do I know how beta over kappa changes with temperature? Yeah, I probably don't. And the other thing that you were forgetting is you're forgetting step five. Step five says measurables, properties, or equations of state. Did I mention anything about measurables? Did I say anything about properties? Well, other than heat capacity, no. Did I mention anything about, oh, I don't know, an equation of state? Well, I did say for the van der Waals equation of state, so I'm gonna say yes. So if I have an equation of state and I want it in terms of an equation of state, do I put it in terms of beta or kappa? Never, ever, 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 ever. So that's naughty. I wouldn't even put a nice red mark, ooh, red mark. Red mark. And then my red's kind of dying. All right, but no, we don't do that. We just leave it as dpdp. But that still doesn't really help us, does it? Well, I'm t I'm seeing how a derivative changes with temperature. Okay. But in a, in another sense, let's say let's let's say dpdt equals alpha. And so is d alpha dt. Could I do d alpha dt, so to speak? You know, assuming I knew how alpha changed with temperature. Okay, I, yeah, I could. Um, well, let's think about this. Okay, so I got an equation to say db dd. I could plug that in. I'm not going to because I don't plug in things to the end. Um, but I could. Okay. Um, but let's think about this. Have I ever taken the derivative of a derivative? Have I ever said that, oh, I don't know, y equals x cubed, and I took the derivative, and then I took the derivative of that derivative? I just blew your mind. Yeah. Because this guy is also equal to d squared y dx squared equals 6x. This is why we use this notation, not Newton's notation. Okay. It just makes more sense in reality. The y primes are oh, nice and clean when you take calc 1. But when you actually have to use calculus, way better to think about it in terms of changes. Okay, so, well, so this especially because it has the same constant, this just equals d squared d, you know, p, dt squared constant v. And you may be like, well, can you do that? Well, we've always said that this is like algebra. You know, derivatives are not derivatives, they're kind of like algebra. You know, all these dps and stuff. Okay, um, what is d times d? d squared. What is... 1 over dt times 1 over dt, dt squared. And then they're all the same constant. Okay. 
So let's move on. Uh, hopefully that has kind of sunk in. So um, we move things over and I get dCv dV at constant t is equal to t times d squared p dt squared That's be. All right. <clears throat> All right. Well, um, I don't have any DSs. I don't have any HTCs. I don't have any funky functions. The properties, measurables, or equations of state. Well, I already said an equation of state, so let's do the equation of state. Okay. Um, let's see. Erase some of this nonsense. So I got P is equal to RT over B minus B minus A over B squared. Huh? Um, DP DT at constant B. Well, A is constant, B is constant, B is constant, B is constant, R is constant. So the derivative is R over B minus B. Take the second derivative. Zero times t is well. That's also equal to zero. I mean, they're like, well, should I, you know, shouldn't I multiply t first so that this is r t squared minus a t? Good question. No. Why? Because that t is on this side of the d, not on this side. If it was d p t squared, or c, sorry, d squared p t, then yes, you would. You would multiply it by t first and then take the derivative. But it's not that way. It's t d. So the t is separate from any changes, okay? So it's just zero. Well, what does that say? It says that the heat capacity for a van der Waals fluid does not change with changes in volume or density, at least under isothermal conditions. So that's what it says. 